A typical car today uses every day a hundred times its own weight in ancient plants inefficiently converted to gasoline. What happens to that fuel energy when it goes in your tank? Seven-eighths of it gets lost before it gets to the wheels. Of the one-eighth that gets to the wheels, half of that either heats the air that you're pushing aside or heats the tires and road. Only the last 6% of the fuel energy actually accelerates the car and then heats the brakes when you stop. And yet 95% of the mass you're accelerating is the car, not the driver. So 6% of 5%, that's about 0.3% of the fuel energy ends up moving the driver. This is not very gratifying after 120 some years of devoted engineering effort. Anything that needs to be moved from point A to point B would use less fuel and less energy to accelerate it, move it, and decelerate it if it were lighter. And that's really where the fiber forge process is aimed at uh, creating affordable structures that are lighter in weight. We use carbon composites in military and aerospace where cost is almost no object. Uh, you know, it's worth 700 bucks present value to take a pound out of an airplane, so they're willing to pay a lot to do that. But uh, to move into automaking, you need to make these composite structures in a thousand times higher volume and lower cost than now. Our main goal for any particular market is, is really affordability. And so the way we do that is we try to automate the process to turn the carbon fiber into a finished product that can be stamped. Uh, just like a steel part today in an automobile, you can stamp a thermoplastic uh, tailored blank that's made by the fiber forge process. The parts are typically designed in uh, industry standard CAD tools, computer-aided design tools, designed for composites in the 3D shape that they're intended to be, and then we take that and flatten it into a 2D shape and translate that into what's called a CAD CAM system, so computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing software system that makes the tool paths for the tailored blank. That is the automatic layup system that makes the tailored blank. What you're seeing is a motion table that moves X, Y, and rotates under a fixed head. It's part of our patented process, and it's laying up the tape a strip at a time next to each other. But we can lay up a blank on the order of a few minutes. This has, I think, 14 layers that are uh, laid down kind of like plywood with the carbon fiber pointing in different directions so you get the strength in the directions you want, not otherwise. Well, then since this is thermoplastic, you can heat it up till it softens, stick it on a hot die, and mold it to the shape you want. The heater heats the blank with infrared energy, and once the blank is, uh, the resin and it's fully molten, it shuttles in to the system, and then it gets uh, essentially uh, compressed and frozen in place. You end up with an amazingly strong material. This particular one's tougher than titanium. And really stiff, as you can tell from the sound. So plastics have changed since the graduate. <laughs> and you can make this in 30 or 60 seconds and just stamp out the parts just like steel, except you need about uh, oh, 10 or 20 times fewer parts to make the auto body. The parts snap precisely together for gluing. No hoists, no jigs, no robots, no welders and lay color in the mold, you can make it whatever color you want, so you get rid of the paint shop, that's another half billion dollars investment. So a very, uh, very different way to make cars. It's what's called a disruptive technology, and of course it's, it's smart for uh, automakers to adopt something like that right away before their competitors do and sell them their steel stamping equipment to slow them down. I think uh, you know the first automaker that really gets serious about lightweighting and either licenses our technology or comes up with its own uh, competitive technology will really own a key piece of the next generation of transportation. An automaker will be smart to spend its money making the cars lighter rather than trying to make the fuel cells cheaper and the tanks smaller. You'll get to the same place but with much less time, money and risk.